for all your first Good year. morning! We are at the radio, radio station in Chittenango. We're gonna go do a spot to plug, 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 because that's what we do. So, yay! Here with Gabriel Gale, author of... Hey. Tell me the full title of your book so I don't screw it up. It's Gabriel Gale's Ages of Oz, A Fiery Friendship. There we go. See, I wouldn't have gotten all of that. <laughs> Here we go. Perfect weather for this weekend's Oz Stravaganza in Chittenango. Joining us in the studio, Mark Baum, no relation to L. Frank. Thank you. And Gabe Gale, <laughs> no relation to Dorothy. <laughs> to talk about OzFest. This is great. Oz Stravaganza. Mark, it's nice to see you. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm still recovering from the news that Fergie's leaving Black Eyed Peas. But I'll okay. move beyond that. So we can talk about the right. festival. We'll okay. still hear from her. Yeah, boy, yeah. this has just uh, turned into an entire weekend of fun and excitement it up is. in Chittenango. It is. It started with a little parade at the library in 1978. This is the 40th festival, if you can believe it. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, having cake and singing oh, happy yeah. birthday to L. Frank Baum, and it's become this three day event. And uh, now we're uh, in a fortunate position of being able to bring in wonderful guests for the weekend. And this year, one of our guests is Gabriel Gale. He has a brand new book that uh, is out with Simon & Schuster, just launched uh, May 16th, called Ages of Oz, A Fiery Friendship, and we're really excited Ooh. about it. This yeah. is very cool. You've expanded the Oz universe. Tell me about this game. <clears throat> yeah, so Ages of Oz is uh, a intellectual property I've been working on for about 10 years, and it's basically a prequel and a sequel of the L. Frank Baum books, mm -hmm. and this particular book, A Fiery Friendship, tells Glinda's origin story, and in Ages of Oz, she's a... Uh, very, very powerful sorceress. She's like the most powerful sorceress in Oz's history. Wow! So if you're into like Wonder Woman, which I am, uh, you'd be interested in this story because it's like very girl power, very empowerment story. It's, it's family friendly. So. Well, what kind cool. of inspired you to focus on this story? And you said that you had been at the Oz Travaganza 10 years ago just to, to come and see what it's all about. So you must have always been a fan, right? Uh, I was a fan, but <clears throat> this is my first year participating in the Oz Travaganza, so I'm super excited. And what was your question? Just in terms of inspiring you to write this story. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, self-empowerment is, mm -hmm. is the biggest inspiration. It's finding what's inside of us uh, and, and using it to cause positive change in the world. Well, it's very cool. I checked out your website, theagesofoz.com, and in your bio it says you are a royal Oz historian. That's what, right. Yeah. What exactly is that? <laughs> so, so L. Frank Baum was the first royal historian. Okay. Uh, there's been a few really great ones, and I think today I can call myself one of them now that this book is out. Oh, very cool. Yeah. All right. And now this is a, a planned trilogy that you have, Correct. right? Yeah. And, uh, and then we're just going to keep expanding the universe? Or? Correct, yeah. Yeah, oh, as cool. long as I can keep Brian, yes. and I think that's part of it that's so fun because it's not just the Wizard of Oz. I mean, obviously, Wicked is huge, right. and right. that gives you a totally different perspective. And this sounds like this gives you a totally yeah. different perspective on the story. I mean, how many? Yeah, I mean, L. Frank Baum wrote a bunch of wrote books. fourteen books, fourteen yeah. books dealing with Oz. So yeah. you're just expanding on that, and just yeah, yeah it's like um. So <clears throat> I took like one sentence that Baum wrote in one of the books and expanded that into this particular trilogy. Well, very cool. Yeah, huh? What are we gonna crazy. What are we gonna have Gabe do, Mark? Listen, Listen, uh, uh, yeah. all kinds of stuff. He's doing. He's actually doing a sign at the All Things Oz Museum today at 2 o'clock, but then he'll be uh, doing autograph signings in the park uh, each day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, he's going to be on stage with John Fricke. Of course, John hosts our event every year. Love John and, uh, Fricke. Yeah, he's the guy who's literally the voice on the DVD if you just switch it over to the commentator <laughs> sure. track, so he is sure. the preeminent Oz authority. Uh, but at 6 o'clock Friday and Saturday, he does a free stage show, and he has guests, um, and Gabe will be one of his guests. Jane Lahr is here this year, too, the daughter of Cowardly Lion, Burt Lahr. Oh, so word. she'll be there talking about some family stuff. And uh, Tina Marie Casamento Libby, who uh, is the conceiving producer of Chasing Rainbows, um, The Road to Oz, which is a Judy Garland story that's heading to Broadway. She's uh, here this year, so we've got a great guest list. Well, you have list. a big weekend ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, we do you know fireworks on Friday, of course. Uh, Saturday is that huge parade at 2 o'clock, right. um, which is all Oz and music and a lot of fun. And Gabe will be in the parade too. Very uh, exciting. Yeah, so uh, it, it's all kinds of stuff uh, all weekend long and then Sunday we do the big grand finale uh, on stage with all our guests. So there's a lot to do. There's rides and games and all the normal festival things and sure. vendors and all that. But uh, it, it's an Aussie good time uh, I think for everyone. And uh, for Gabe this is just so timely because the book just came out. That is so and, exciting. Uh, You'll have perfect. copies available for sale. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll be signing for the next three days. As a yeah. matter of fact, you brought things, us some yeah. copies of the book so Very we'll have to nice. do something fun to get but those But if around. for some reason Somebody can't get out there. Your books are available online. Yeah, you can order it through All Things Oz, and yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, we've got them at the museum. I mean, they're at Barnes and Noble, all the local bookstores. Uh, it's a wide release, and uh, they're everywhere. Now. And in terms of the extravaganza, you can also just go on your mm -hmm. website as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, oz-stravaganza.com. 
And uh, we've got, uh, you know, our authors and artists are there this year, like mm -hmm. always, so you can see a lot of what's going on in Oz. And then behind Amy, you can't see it because we're on radio, but uh, <laughs> uh, Tori Calam Calamito's here this weekend. She's the Oz vlog uh, person, and she's kind of documenting everything uh, for our weekend. The official you know, we, Oz vlogger. The Oz vlogger. That's Yo, right. so we welcome, always, welcome. We always go through this thing where um, at the end of the thing, at the end of the festival, we're like, Gosh, it would have been nice if we had some pictures or some video, but we did it while working, so yeah, we don't have it. So, right. so this year we thought, well, we have a solution. Yeah, it took us 40, 40 festivals to figure well, it out. Well, that's we okay, Mark. But yeah, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right in downtown Chittenango. Parking's free, admission's free, uh, the stage shows are all free, and it's a uh, great family fun. Well, looking forward to Oz Stravaganza and Gabe Gale. Congratulations again on the book. And, Thanks uh, for having us. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun following all that happens in the Ages of Oz universe. Mark Baum, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Good Enjoy to see you. Oz Stravaganza. We'll link it all up to our Ted and Amy Facebook page online as well. Hey, right. good morning. So we just got done with 93Q, Gabe's first radio appearance. First Yay! Radio Tori excited. was in recording the whole thing, and uh, we got to meet everyone. It was totally awesome in every way. And Renee was there keeping us all in line, so hey, I think we did pretty well. Ted and Amy are awesome. It was a great time. And now we're just ready to see everybody at the festival, right? We're yeah. really excited. Come on out, everybody come out. Yeah, awesome in every way, thanks. Come out, come out, <laughs> wherever you are. I'm walking to Starbucks. So we just finished the radio, and uh, the radio thingy. I don't know what you would call it, spot? Radio spot, that's good, we'll go with that. And it was tons of fun. I, you know, I just, I'm still a bit starstruck. I still feel like a fish out of water. I'm like, what am I doing here? Uh, but as Mark pointed out, you know, this is mutually beneficial because I'm able to help promote their stuff. They're able to help promote my stuff. So I was promised that there was a Starbucks within walking distance. I'm gonna just keep walking until I find coffee. Cause I, they do have a hospitality room, but I'm the kind of girl now who needs extra, 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 extra coffee to get through the day. <laughs> I love you guys. This is so much fun. This is hey. the room where Al Frank Baum married Maude Gage Baum, oh, the daughter of Matilda Joslyn Gage. Mm -hmm. And he actually took this wonderful photo of the room, we think, to show his children where he and Maude got married. So that's an actual photograph that Al Frank Baum took. Yes, himself. we enlarged it, but you can actually see yeah. his camera there in the. <gasps> Mirror reflection. Oh, oh so he was back. Tripod. He was in the back parlor, looking towards Genesee Street, mm -hmm. and um, we think he kind of set the scene a little bit with some of the objects and this whatnot because he had such a theater background. Yeah. So that's why this is the only house that's decorated to the 19th century. Very cool. We just want to say hello and introduce and let everybody know that we are standing at the Matilda Jocelyn Gage Foundation's preserved home of Matilda Jocelyn Gage. This is where Al Frank Baum and Maude were married. We are standing in the room, actually, that they were married in. It's me, Ryan J. Tori Calamito here. Hi! And Sue Boland, who yes. is a historian, a Gage yes. historian, and we mm -hmm. work here, is here to give us a little bit of a tour. You can ask her your questions, anything you want to know about Al Frank Baum or hear about Chittenango. Are we in La uh, this Fayetteville? This is Fayetteville. Yep. Fayetteville, which is just next to Chittenango, New York. We're here for Oz Travaganza this weekend, but it's always a brilliant uh, experience to stop by the Matilda Jocelyn Gage uh, home and see all the relics and the history of L. Frank Baum and his mother-in-law, who was one of the most significant women in American history yes. in fighting for the right of I'm glad women you to put get it the vote. that way. Yeah. Yes. Um, but and it hasn't gotten her uh, historical due, so to speak, right? Right. right. For for political reasons. So it's yes. nice to honor her this way, and this this uh, experience is not to be missed. So I just wanted to set the scene for everybody of where we are and what we're doing, what's going on here, and then kind of. Uh, We'll, we'll let Sue guide us through a bit of the tour. Oh my gosh. Well, this is, this, is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the only house that's open to the public where L. Frank Baum spent a significant amount of time. Mm -hmm. His other houses that he lived in, many of which are in Syracuse, um, and you know the birthplace in Chittenango, they're either not open to the public or they haven't survived. Mm -hmm. um, the only other place you can visit is Hotel Coronado. So, right, um, and that's in California. Right, where he, right. Where he so, almost lived there. He stayed there for a yeah, long time. Wrote some yeah, but we there. claim the first part of his life, where, where he grew up and became a man and um, took up this hobby of uh, photography, which was very difficult in those days with the 
glass negative plates and all that. But he took, we have a special exhibit just for Oz Travaganza of some of the photographs that he took, which they're not the originals. We've scanned them and enlarged them and printed them out. And we have some wonderful photographs of his first two children, mm -hmm. um, some which were taken here in Fayetteville, um, some pictures with Maud, um, just adorable, Frank Jr. and Robert. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Um, and who's this? That's Frank Jr. This is Frank Jr. Yes, when little boys were dressed like little girls back then. How interesting. Yeah, until about age five, and then they would get their hair cut and That's so start wearing different, pants. right? For today, yes. now they be Absolutely. bullied today. It is. Yeah. It's very different. Mm -hmm. And this is one of their houses in Syracuse that they lived in, and another um, picture of the parlor. Is that the piano that's actually? No, it's not the same piano. Looks exactly the same. But yeah, we've tried to get. Mm -hmm. Antiques recreate, that look fun. very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so is, this wasn't originally here? No. Okay. But we do believe that they had a piano and that it might have gone to Maud's house in Syracuse look at with how Frank. Similar they look. Is this the same owl that was there? No. No. Okay. Nope. So this was donated recreate. by a volunteer years ago. Okay, cool. Um, the, the, the original items that we have are this painting. And that's actually a picture that Frank took of Matilda painting. That was one of her hobbies oh. and um, to relax with. And just to have a candid photograph like that uh -huh. of, with, you know, because most of the pictures in those days were posed uh -huh. in um, studios. Just, that's just amazing. Right. And we have another one over by her writing desk in the similar place where she's writing instead of painting. So much work on. Wow, it's very and small. Yes. Women's writing desks well, were smaller than men's. You can see she's not using it in that picture. She's using a much bigger table. So we think a lot of the work that they did went on here in the back parlor. But this is her actual desk. Work. Yes. Wow. Because remember, they did a tremendous amount of organizing for the suffrage movement, but they didn't have electricity. Mm -hmm. So it was writing for newspapers, everything was written by hand. They did have, later on, typewriters and stenographers, but sure. it was more expensive. Right. So they did a tremendous amount of handwriting, letters to people, and writing articles for the newspapers and, and whatnot. So, yeah. um, and Matilda did a lot of that kind of work for the suffrage movement. Mm -hmm. And so, aside from L. Frank Baum and Maude being married in that room, straight ahead there, mm -hmm. what, um, what other significance do we know of L. Frank Baum being in this home? We know he photographed well, Matilda in, within here and other, other, other momentous occasions. The biggest thing was that he, she um, encouraged him to write down his stories. Yes. And we know that repeatedly they're from family stories mm -hmm. um, that... Um, you know, have come down through the family where she would hear him telling stories. We know the neighborhood kids. We know from family letters that um, he brought a lot of fun to the family. Mm -hmm. You know, like he would come here on the 4th of July and set off firecrackers and stuff like that. And all the neighborhood kids would come around. It was a much different time before the internet and TV, sure. you know. Was it true that um, she was not initially in favor of uh, their marriage? Yes, that's another family story that happened right here where he came to, um, uh, to Maud was telling her family that she was going to marry Frank and um, Matilda was not happy and they closed these doors and left him all alone in the parlor. Oh dear. And um, Maud was raised to be a very independent young woman. Cornell had just started accepting women and um, in the 1870s and she was attending there. She was the first one in the family to go to a four-year school um, other than her brother, of, you know, uh, she was the first female in the family to go to a four-year school. And Matilda had actually been rejected from medical school, you know, many years before. Oh. So when she told her mom that she was going to drop out and marry Frank and they were going to go on the road with the maid of Aaron, um, his first successful play, um, Matilda was not very happy about it. I can understand that as a mother. You yeah. know, that's a that's a great concern. The, the theater life was not um, and still very is not in those days. And but but Maude was very independent, and she said, "Well, then, if you won't marry, you know, let us get married here. We'll elope." And so I think Matilda realized she had raised her daughter to think for herself, and so she relented and said, "Well, you know." 
of course you can get married here by the Baptist minister from the church down the street it was very common practice for people to get married in their homes back then um, had a little orchestra and you know lots of people crammed in here I never ever get tired of walking down the yellow brick road this place is amazing I love this town I love the people I love how invested they are in its rich Oz history and I just love this why can't every day be today <laughs> we're off to the museum Gabriel Gale is doing a book signing today and I can't wait Look at the All Things Oz Museum, which I just never get sick of seeing. This place is a collector's fantasy land because every year they get something really exciting, every year there's something new to look at, and you get to see people who are interested in Oz really getting an appreciation for it that they don't see day to day you know it's so a part of my life I don't even think about it anymore but now I get to see casual fans like look around and really enjoy um, what we enjoy daily which is this obsession this world this universe that's been created and it's amazing oh look the head of metamorable has arrived <laughs> Yesterday she was getting her hair done, but today they have her ready to rock. Very cool. So I'm at my table at Artist Alley. I am next to Vincent Myran, famed Oz artist, and my section is so pathetic. Next to this. <laughs> Good job making me look bad, Ben. If you guys have not seen Vincent Myrant's art, please go and check it out. Where you sell your art, Vincent? All over. All over. All over the country, all over the world. So where can fans go online to find your stuff? Oh, they can Facebook friend me. <laughs> I use it as an informal art gallery. Wonderful. So exciting. Yeah, M-Y-R-A-N-D, Vincent Myrant. Woo! Thank you for uh, the commercial. No problem. You guys. Oh my god. So I still haven't gotten up the nerve to talk to Jane Larb. I'm kind of disappointed. I'm <laughs> like, what am I doing? I can do this. I'm a grown woman. I'm not going to cry. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to very publicly thank Dennis Coolis, who's our president uh, of the foundation. Stand up, Dennis. Come up here. Come up here and stand with John and Tom, will you? And uh, Tom, Tom has a uh, presentation from the town of Sullivan that he is going to read. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of uh, John Becker and the town board, town of Sullivan, I'd like to welcome everybody here. And uh, anyway, we have a proclamation to read. Uh, resolution recognizing June 3rd is John, John Fricky Day. Throughout the town of Whereas Chittenango, New York, and the town of Sullivan, our birthplace, is the official birthplace of the author of, of Lyman Frank Bomb. And whereas the Oz Travaganza Festival is celebrating the 40th anniversary festival each year at a Ruby Dewey Jubilee. Whereas John Fricke, a New York resident, whose work in the Oz universe has been notable in books, film, television, stage has been the host of the festival for 27 years. Woo! The service for the town of Solomon, village of Chittenango, and the International L. Frank Baum, and all things the Oz Historical Foundation. Whereas the Oz Extravaganza Festival is the largest and longest running festival to celebrate the Wizard of Oz and its author. Whereas without John's input, guidance, and knowledge, such an accomplishment may not have been possible. I proclaim the I therefore proclaim that in recognition of his contributions to the area of local tourism, history, and festivals, that June 3rd, in the year 2017, 
shall officially be recognized as John Fricky Day throughout the town of Sullivan, located in Madison County State of New York. feels like a real first-class dummy right now. <laughs> I was told about a week and a half, two weeks ago, that I should be prepared to be on stage tonight at 5.30 because they were giving him a surprise award. And I've been practicing different ways of pronouncing museum for the last 10 days and trying to come up with plays on words on your last name, uh, which I will now spare you. Um, Thank you, thank you to the town of Sullivan. I, um, we're going to be doing the history of the festival tonight as one of the three parts of the program starting at six o'clock. We have great illustrations that take this back to when Clara Houck started it in 1978. And you will see illustrations of our Munchkin guests and our other special guests. When I, and I'm going to tell the story there of how I first came to be part of all this. Uh, I will say right now that when I got that call in early 1990, they didn't have to explain to me who or what Chittenango was all about because I had known, as I always jokingly say, researching Frank Baum, I knew how to spell Chittenango when I was eight years old. <laughs> I was afraid to try to pronounce it for obvious reasons, but I knew how to spell it. and. To come here and to be part of this and to grow with it uh, side by side, uh, we have seen it go from Saturday morning and afternoon to Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, to a weekend. We have seen tens of thousands, well, cumulatively hundreds of thousands of people come through here because they love Oz the way we all do, and because of the way I do since 1956. It was never supposed to become a career. More than that, it has become a lifetime. And given these associations and given these opportunities, nobody could have a greater blessing than I have had to do what I do and to come here once a year and to do it with all of you. I thank you from my heart for all of this. Thank you very much. Lovely award ceremony for John Fricke. And now we're heading into the Friday evening program. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> 